good morning this is part 3 of module 3 physiology of respiratory system we have already discussed this topic in the first module measurements in the respiratory system the entire process of inspiring and expiring air exchange of gases, distribution of oxygen to the cells and collection of carbon dioxide from the cells forms what is known as the pulmonary function. Pulmonary function and rises provide the means for automated clinical procedures and analysis techniques for carrying out a complete evaluation of the lung function or the respiratory process. Test and instrumentation for the measurement of respiration can be divided into two categories test designed to measure the mechanics of breathing and the physical characteristics of the lungs and diffusion of gases in the lungs distribution of oxygen and collection of carbon dioxide the ability of the pulmonary system to move air and exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide is affected by the various components of the air passages the diaphragm, the rib cage, and its associated muscles, and by the characteristics of the lung tissue itself. Among the basic tests performed are those to determine the volumes and capacities of the respiratory system. These are defined as follows Tidal volume is a volume of gas inspired or expired during normal quiet breathing. Minute volume is a volume of gas exchanged per minute during quiet breathing. It is equal to the tidal volume multiplied by the breathing rate. Alveolar ventilation is a volume of fresh air entering the alveoli with each breath. Inspiratory reserve volume is the extra volume of gas that a person can inspire with maximal effort after reaching the normal end inspiratory level. The end inspiratory level is a level reached at the end of a normal quiet inspiration. Expiratory research volume is the extra volume of gas that can be expired with maximum effort beyond the end expiratory level. The end expiratory level is a level reached at the end of a normal quiet expiration. Residual volume is the volume of gas remaining in the lungs after a forced expiration. The graph shows the various parameters. Functional residual capacity is a volume of gas remaining in the lungs after normal expiration. Total lung capacity is a volume of gas in the lungs at the point of maximal inspiration. Vital capacity is the greatest volume of gas that can be inspired by voluntary effort after maximum expiration irrespective of time. Inspiratory capacity is the maximum volume that can be inspired from the resting end expiratory position. Dead space is a functional volume of the lung that does not participate in gas exchange. A number of forced breathing tests are carried out to assess the muscle power associated with breathing and the resistance of the airway. These are forced vital capacity which is the total amount of air that can be forcibly expired as quickly as possible after taking the deepest possible breath. Forced expiratory volume is a percentage of the VC that can be forced out of the lungs in a given period with maximal exertion and maximum mid expiratory flow is a maximum rate of flow of air during the middle half of the FEG spirogram. Mid expiratory time is a time in seconds over which this volume is forcibly exhaled. Spirometry the instrument used to measure lung capacity and volume is called a spirometer. Basically, the record obtained from this device is called a spirogram. 
Spirometers are calibrated containers that collect gas and make measurements of lung volume or capacity that can be expired. By adding a time base, flow dependent qualities can be measured. The addition of gas analyzers makes the spirometer a complete pulmonary function testing laboratory. Water seal spirometer Most of the respiratory measurements can be adequately carried out by the classic water sealed spirometer. Most of the respiratory measurements can be adequately carried out by the water sealed spirometer. It consists of an upright water filled cylinder of capacity 6 to 8 liters. Inside the cylinder, an inverted weighted bell jar is attached. The breathing pipe arrangement from the bottom of the water filled container is projected above the water level inside the bell jar. When a person breathes into the bell through the breathing pipe, the volume of air trapped inside it gets changed. The changing air volume gets converted into vertical motion of the bell jar and hence the position of hanging weight changes accordingly. This is because another end of the string attached to the bell jar is attached to the weight via pulleys. The patient breathes air into the tube via the mouthpiece. During each cycle of inhalation and exhalation, the jar moves up and down. It depends on the volume of air inhaled and exhaled into or out from the air inside the jar. The weight attached to the string moves up and down depending on the movement of the bell jar. A pin is attached to the weight which draws the graph on the paper attached to a rotating drum. The graph produced is known as chymograph. The vertical movement of the weight can be converted to the electrical signal to produce a display on the instrument screen. Transducers have been designed to transform the movement of the bell, bellows or piston of volume spirometers into electrical signals. These are then used to compute the numerical results electronically. The popularity and low cost of personal computers have made them an attractive method of automating both volume and flow spirometers. The graph shows a normal spirogram. The second type is a wet spirometer. A wet spirometer consists of two square pans parallel to each other and hinged along one edge. The first pan is permanently attached to the wedge casting stand and contains a pair of 5 cm inlet tubes. The other pan swings freely along its hinge with respect to the fixed pan. A space existing between the two pans is sealed or airtight with vinyl bellows to from a chamber which held the air to be breathed. As air is introduced into the chamber or withdrawn from it, the moving pan changes its position to compensate for the volume changes. The construction of the wedge is such that the moving pan will respond to very slight changes in volume. The transducers are attached to the fixed frame and are coupled to the edge of the moving pan. One transducer produces a DC signal proportional to displacement or volume while the other has a DC output proportional to velocity or flow. The transducer outputs are connected to an electronic circuit which contains the power supply, an amplifier and the built-in calibration networks. The third type is ultrasonic spirometer. Ultrasonic spirometer depend for their action on transmitting ultrasound between a pair of transducers and measuring changes in transit time caused by the velocity of the intervening fluid medium. Pulses that travel in the same direction the gas is flowing will take less time to travel a given distance while pulses traveling against the direction of gas flow takes a longer time. Ultrasonic spirometers utilize a pair of ultrasonic transducers mounted on opposite sides of a flow tube. The transducers are capable of both transmitting and receiving ultrasonic pulses. In conventional ultrasonic flow meters, pulses are transmitted through the liquid or gas in the flow tube against and then with the direction of flow. The pulse transmit time upstream T1 and downstream T2 can be expressed as T1 equal to D by C minus V dash and T2 is equal to D by C plus V dash where D is the distance between the transducers, 
C is the velocity of sound propagation in the fluid and V dash is a fluid velocity vector along the path of the pulses. The flow velocity is found to be d by 2 cos theta into f2 minus f1 where f1 is 1 by t1 and f2 is 1 by t2. The transit time of an ultrasonic pulse depends on the distance between the two transducers, the angle of the pulses relative to the direction of gas flow and the speed of sound. In gas flow measurements, pulmonary function tubes larger than 3 cm in diameter must be used. The single frequency systems that measure time delay directly must be able to resolve nanoseconds since the total transit delay t is usually measured in microseconds. This technique is not easily implemented because of the difficulty in measuring the small time differences. Body plethysmograph Spirometry is a standard method for measuring most relative lung volumes. However, it is incapable of providing information about absolute volumes of air in the lung. Thus, a different approach is required to measure residual volume, functional residual capacity and total lung capacity. Two of the most common methods of obtaining information about these volumes are gas dilution test and body plethysmography. In a traditional plethysmograph, the test subject or patient is placed inside a sealed chamber which is an airtight box with a single mouthpiece. Utilizing boil slow, that is at constant temperature, the volume of gas varies inversely with the pressure. The ratio of the change in lung volume to change in mouth pressure is used to determine the thoracic gas volume. At the end of the normal expiration, the mouthpiece is closed. The patient is then asked to make an inspiratory effort. As the patient tries to inhale, the lungs expand decreasing pressure within the lungs and increasing lung volume. This in turn increases the pressure within the box since it is a closed system and the volume of the box compartment has decreased to accommodate the new volume of the subject. First the change in volume of the chest is computed. The initial pressure of the box times its volume is considered equal to the known pressure after expansion times the unknown new volume. Once the new volume is found, the original volume minus the new volume is a change in volume in the box and also the change in volume in the chest. With this information, Boyle's law is used again to determine the original volume of the gas in the chest. The initial volume times the initial pressure is equal to the final volume times the final pressure. Thank you.